Hello, my name is Mars, and welcome back to Burn the Shape of Fantasy. Let's check our quest for now. Um, investigate the hill. Yeah, so that big hill that looks suspicious with um, a big hollow in the middle. Is it here that we can look at it from? No, it's from the other side. Um, oh, I do know that we need to I need fix to break this the rope. somehow. No, we don't have anything in our inventory, so I guess we gotta go right to the hill. But the island has changed. What happened? There's an elephant statue now. Interesting. Was this here before? Hmm. But what the... An elephant and a balloon? What's going on here? They feel familiar. Maybe a dream. Ah, uh, five weeks in a balloon. Jules Verne's first novel. Okay, so here we have our first, like, real-world trivia about Jules Verne. In Jan on January 31st, 1863, Jules Verne saw his first novel published, Five Weeks in a Balloon. The story describes a thrilling journey through the unexplored territories of Africa, led by the eccentric doctor Samuel Ferguson, his faithful lackey Joe, and the professional hunter Dick Kennedy. In order to find the sources of the Nile, these aeronauts decide to cross the continent traveling in a balloon, named Victoria in honor of the Queen of England, whose innovative use of hydrogen allows it to make long journeys. The novel immediately became a public and critical success. In part, this was due to the enormous interest for the African continent of the audience at the time, but also because of the mixture of imaginary travel and solid, for the time, scientific information. One of the most famous passages in the novel describes how an elephant tows the balloon to cross the mountain range known as the Mountains of the Moon. Thanks to this first success, Verne gained the financial security that would allow him to fulfill his dream of becoming a writer, he signed a contract with Pierre Jules Hetzel's, Hetzel's publishing house, which was to publish the rest of his works for the next 40 years. It is worth noting as a curiosity that Verne had never ridden in a balloon when he wrote the book and would not do so until years later. Well, I'm glad he at least got the chance to uh, eventually. Um, I was thinking, my only real reference for like what Jules Verne was like as a, per as a person is that one... Hark a Vagrant comic where he writes a fan letter to Edgar Allan Poe and draws and draws a picture of them um, being bros in a hot air balloon. <laughs> the the picture of uh, Edgar Allan Poe reacting to the letter is a bit of a meme. Maybe you'd recognize that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I sound insane. But Hark a Vagrant is a very funny web comic. I would I would recommend it. All right. Let's get back to the game. Edgar Allan Poe, Alexandre Dumas, Victor Hugo. Never heard these names before. Oh. How strange. They don't look like they have been dragged here by the sea. Where do they come from? But Poe is your bro. What's going on here? Compagnie Parisienne d'Electricité? That can't be. How does a streetlight get here? And this writing desk, again, it's weirdly familiar. Yeah, so I think that in this imaginary world, he's getting glimpses of the real world. Maybe that's what the, um, that's what his vision of the bridge is as well. That's possible, right? That must be the light I saw. Wait a moment, there's something on the ground. Ooh, that cloud has a skull in it. Scary. A machete! Yay! The stick has a weird shape, almost like a key. What's this? A door? That wasn't here before. It's jammed. To activate the mechanism, I need the missing blocks. Could the petroglyphs be the answer? Okay, look for the fragments, activate the mechanism. mechanism. Alright. Investigate the four petroglyphs. Well, first... I need something that can help me. I'm gonna need that machete. Another petroglyph. The symbols are different. Alright. 
Do I, I actually need the key, I think? Yes, I do. Okay. I need something that can help me. Uh, I gotta remember, I need to actually go into my inventory first. Yes. Petroglyph 1, okay. Was there one on this side of the island? I don't remember. I think there was. There was one with the butterfly on it. Yeah. No, not not exit. Use. Yeah. This is going to be a breeze for me because this is still part of the demo. I just want to see if anything else has changed over by the wreck. I don't think so. Yeah. Th this art, I, I, I know I've said wonderful things about this art before, but like it, it just occurred to me. It kind of looks like a, a drawing with like colored pencils, really nice colored pencils, you know? It doesn't look like pixels. It looks very smooth and together. And there's nothing wrong with looking like pixels, of course, but... Hello, creepy skull cloud. It's just impressive when they can get get pixels to look like something else. Alright, another petroglyph over here. Yes, okay. Alright. I should go back up this way. And I believe the last petroglyph is down here. So, do I need the machete? Oh, also, can I use the machete on the box? The box that was over in this clearing by the... Yeah, over here? Yeah, I can break the lock with it. And get tools, generic tools, okay. That I will probably need eventually. Soon, rather, than eventually, I would say. Alright. Go down the ladder. I just paused for a second to check whether climbing down the ladder is a continuous action, or if, um... You just press down once and you keep going down. But it's continuous, you gotta keep pressing it down. Alright. I recall this puzzle gave me pause a little bit. Um, okay, we can't go past the waterfall. Okay. We can lift that ladder. Slightly. Oh, no. Okay. Um... I think I need to move this ladder down a little bit. Um, yes, I can move. Oh, it has to be touching the ground. Okay. Okay, lock that one in place. I don't entirely understand how this works. Um, no, I can't. I can't use that. There we go. All right, that worked. I, I don't entirely understand how I did that. That one took me a long time in the demo. All right. I need something that can help me. Tools! Generic tools, that should help. Hope that bridge is sturdy. Oh, what's the drawing on the wall? I don't think it's relevant here, but it's kind of interesting looking. There's a butterfly. One of the petroglyphs looks like now a butterfly. Now I have all the blocks for the door. I wonder those snakes. Petroglyph 4, okay. The ladders are in place for me already, so I don't need to worry about that. Of 
cool bird calls. Alright, I'm gonna make my way back over to that door. I was about to say, he's very athletic for an author, but he's not an author here, is he? He's like an explorer, so it would make sense that he can leap and bound like that. Alright. Oh jeez, what do I know? How do I know the right order is? Um... How do I know what the right order is? Oh, okay. Oh boy, I gotta remember. So the petroglyphs also have another little symbol on them. Are they on the keys themselves? They're not. Okay. So I'm going to say, I'm gonna type this down. I'm gonna say that, that kind of looks like a butterfly hanging off a wall. Butterfly on wall. It looks like, you know, a rook, like the chess piece. So I'm going to say rook for that. Um, butterfly alone. Oh, I can't type. Butterfly alone. Rectangle. I don't remember what the... I don't remember if there are other rectangles, but hopefully that's enough to differentiate it from the others. Yeah, so we have to make the two pairs of symbols match. And unfortunately, that means we have to go on a bit of a track to look at the other petroglyphs again. Okay, so snake with the little house, I'm going to say that looks like. It's a trapezoid, but it looks more like a... A little house is more evocative to me, so I'm going to call it a little house. And down this way is the final petroglyph. Um, okay, it is another rectangle. Um, that kind of looks like a fruit with like a stem hanging from a tree. So fruit with the vertical rectangle. And the butterfly alone goes with the horizontal rectangle. All right, we got them all. Now let's go back and solve the puzzle. Uh, again, my puzzle solving here would appear to be quite painless, but this is because I have played this before, this segment. Although the the actual puzzle in the in the first chapter wasn't that difficult either. I mean, it was just the right amount of difficult for my brain power, I should say. I'm not generally that good at puzzle games. And I don't know why this is the second one I've played on the channel. Okay, so. Oh, the, the horizontal rectangle is actually more of a parallelogram. Either way, I know which one goes with it. Um, okay, so. I'm going to. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it was already more or less in the correct configuration. Somebody wants me in some. Lucky. A trap. Should I take the chance? However, I could probably find inside an explanation for what's going on. And of course, it's a much more solid shelter than a wood cabin. Alright, maybe I didn't need to do all that work. <laughs> that was awfully lucky. Okay. 
let's go see what's waiting for us down here. Some blue crystals. Oh, there's another face in the stalagmites. Stalag tights. Stalag tights. C for ceiling, G for ground. I know, I know my rocks. Holy Antikythera mechanism. What's this place? This hasn't been built by some castaway. It must be Atlantean. Ooh, there are mushrooms. I can climb back up if I want, but why would I want to? Oh, there are faces everywhere. Ah! I'm trapped. I hope there's another way out. There's a face. Oh, I can't use my, my cursor. Right above me, there's a creepy face looking out from the rock. There's something glittering over here. Um... A pack and something written on the wall and it looks like some cans. I can't go any further here though. That's interesting. The the castaway that we've been finding the letters from. Oh, we haven't found his third letter actually. Maybe there's one an, another one down here. Cause that was clearly his stuff. That was clearly his stuff by that big rock. Mon Dieu! What's going on on this island? The Life and Incredible Adventures of Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Wait a moment. I remember that. I've read this book a dozen times. My God, the letters, the cabin. These are elements of that same story. Am I hallucinating? Robinson Crusoe, another burn log. A great inspiration. Robinson Crusoe, written by Daniel Defoe, was published on April 25th, 1719, and is considered the first English novel. Defoe wrote Robinson Crusoe in approximately six months when he was over 50 years old, and it was a phenomenon, becoming one of the books with the most editions, translations, and knockoffs in history. Robinson Crusoe was passed off as a chronicle of real events. The stories of shipwrecked sailors were very popular at that time, and there are several names that could have served as inspiration for Defoe, among which stands out that of the buccaneer Alexander Selkirk, who in 1704 preferred to stay on the un uninhabited island of Masa Tierra in the South Pacific, rather than continue aboard the sunk ports, which he considered too damaged to continue sailing. After four years and four months in solitude, he was rescued, safe and sound, by the Duke, another privateer ship. Upon his return to London, his story of survival made him a celebrity. In 1966, the island was renamed Robinson Crusoe's Island. Jules Verne was a great admirer of Defoe's Robinson, something that is evident in many of his works, such as The Mysterious Island, although in this case, what leads the protagonist to the island of the title is not the shipwreck at sea, but the fall of a hot air balloon. Man, Verne really loved those. <laughs> in 1882, he published A School for Robinsons, in which he shipwrecked his characters on another island, where they had to survive all kinds of dangers and threats, such as inclement weather, tribes of cannibals, and even wild animals, with the only with the only help of an aborigine and their own hands. <laughs> I love that Jules Verne was basically writing fan fiction and like AUs of his own work, and we're celebrating that in this game. I love that. By the way, the full title of the work was The Life and Strange Surprising Adventures of Robinson Crusoe of York Mariner, who lived eight and twenty years all alone in an uninhabited island on the coast of America near the mouth of the great river of Arunake, having been cast on shore by shipwreck wherein all the men perished but himself, with an account how he was at last as strangely delivered by pirates, written by himself. Amazing. Okay. All right, what's going on here? What's this door? Oh, there's another note here. Wait a moment, there's a note here. What mystery is this? All the books have my name on them, but they're all blank, no titles. Oh, I remember I really liked this. Um, I really liked this uh, puzzle. So from the earth to the moon, we have the earth. This is the green ray. Where's the volcano? I know there are things like representing these titles everywhere. Oh, this is from the Earth to the Moon. 
around the world in 80 days, there's a globe, the green ray, and there's the volcano. Yes. I like puzzles like that. And I like that the green ray, the green ray was kind of a tricky one for me to figure out, I remember. It's, um, the spine of a book is the green ray. I, I like that. It's ancient Greek. The gift of Placea will help you to change pieces of the world. Only if your imagination is as brilliant as her flame. Okay. Hello, butterfly. What's this? It must be hundreds of years old. What? Good oh. heavens. But what in the name of... There's that hallucination. B -b -b but here again? What's going on? Did this artifact do it? What is this? Oh, what's this crack on the floor? All right. I just now realized that the there's a butterfly motif in this game, which probably has to do with the time manipulation stuff. It, it's a reference to the butterfly effect in the same way that that's a motif in Life is Strange and Until Dawn. Choice-based games like to use the butterfly effect a lot, but it also has a lot to do with time travel. Which I guess Life is Wait Strange has to do with. Description. The gift of Placea will help you to change pieces of the world. But maybe I could fix them with this devilish artifact. All right, so what do I need to do to activate the thing again? Uh, I forget already. What do I click to activate the thing? What are my controls? <laughs> What are my controls? Um, uh, open IMAG C. Okay. I forgot already. Okay. No cracks in the flow of time detected. Go back in time. Or very strong. Um, well, first I'm going to go back in time. time. has changed. What happened? Okay. Alright. So that just makes it okay that just makes it go back in time I need to make it very strong before I fix it I guess fortunately stones resisted and kept withstanding oh no that just changes it entirely okay what what the heck <laughs> can I do that again fortunately Stones resisted and kept with standing. Alright, I know they're all gonna crumble behind me. So I gotta get out of here quick. I gotta get out of here quick. Ah, uh, here we go, ladder. We got it. We got it. I think there's gonna be another quick time event right after this, though. <laughs> If I recall correctly. This is a nightmare. I must run away from this island. Maybe I could fix the boat with this devilish artifact. Surrounded I'd by rather butterflies. face the dangers at sea than stay trapped in this madness. Okay. Oh, the boat is up here now? Okay. Okay, I'm going to put it away so I can run. The boat is over by this side of the island. going on Ooh. oh salvation yes I remembered what spaces they are yeah, my problem there is like when I'm doing WASD. All right, I'll, I'll pause it. When I'm doing WASD, when I press D, I'm not thinking D. I'm thinking right, go right. 
you know, and when I press A, I'm not thinking A, I'm thinking go left. And most of the time when I'm thinking of a D as a D, I'm typing and my middle finger is on the D and my ring finger is on the S, you know? So that's why it took me a second to get used to the QTEs with WASD. All right, you can talk now, Jules. While I was drifting away, my head still boiled with questions. I could never imagine that my salvation would come in the form of the monster that destroyed my own ship. Scared to death, I discovered a new truth. It was a monster, yes, but made of steel. Oh, so he was rescued by the Nautilus, I guess. Aftermath of the inevitable. I could never imagine that my salvation would come in the form of the monster that destroyed my own ship. What a tale! If I hadn't seen the iMac working with my own eyes, I would truly believe that you, as we doctors say, were as mad as a March hare. Does something of this make any sense to you? Not at all. But it's not me who has to find it. However, it's obvious that everything, your hallucinations, your amnesia, the books, even the island, draws lines that link your mind with the iMag. Any clue of how we can fix that? Have you considered that your status inside the Nautilus could be the reason for your, let's say, disconnection? It must be hard for you to live together with the ones responsible for the attack that sank your ship. Good point. Months ago, I would have told you yes, and that I hated them for it. But I understood that war is war, and I must recognize, much to my regret, that the captain has opened for me the doors of an incredible world that without the Nautilus and his technology, I could never dream of reaching. Am I a prisoner? Well, there are much worse prisons out there. We are all trapped inside the Nautilus one way or another, my friend. A similar dilemma afflicts myself since I began to be part of this crew. I consecrated my career to save lives, and now I'm a piece of a ruthless war machine. On the other hand, my cholera research is only possible thanks to Nemo's technology. He's an extraordinary man, but fearful. His current condition is unsettling. History will judge him as it will do with us, and whoever writes it will park us in the place he believes we deserve. Now, go to your quarters and get some sleep. Doctor's orders. All right. I didn't realize that the Nautilus was like a warship. Um, maybe Nemo's kind of the bad guy here. Who knows? Um, can we talk to you again, Go Cedric? to your quarters and get some sleep. Nah, he just gives us our quest. Ah, uh, we, we failed a side mission. Search the log in the chart room. Hmm. Can we do that real quick? Or... Nah, I think I'll end the episode here. Um... I guess we're not going to listen to you, Cedric. We're going to go look at some stuff instead of going to bed. For now, though, I have been Mars, and I will be back with more Vern, the Shape of Fantasy.